Welcome. In a previous video, I took a look at a Togo Power portable power station, and I'll put a link in the description of that video. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Togo Power 120 watt solar panel. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video, and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's get this open here. So this is a pretty hefty box. You can tell there's something in it. Okay, we have the panel out. Pull the wrap off of it. Okay, so we have the user manual and some cables. Pull those out. So let's check out the owner's manual. This is how it works. We have the sun here, we have the solar panel. You can plug this into a portable power station, a power bank, a cell phone, a flashlight, tablet. Comes with a user manual, it has a USB A and a USB C port. It has a DC 7909 cable, and that's attached to the solar panel. Then it has a DC 7909 to DC 5521, DC 5525 Anderson XT60 cable. So this is a multi headed cable, and that's on the 120 watt model. So here are the specs peak power is 120 watts, DC output is 18. 18 volts 6.67 amps max. USB A is 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 2.5 amps, or 12 volts at 2 amps. USB Type C is 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3 amps, 12 volts at 3 amps, 15 volts at 3 amps. The cell type is monocrystalline and it has four panels. Dimensions unfolded are 1615 by 520 by 25 millimeters. Dimensions folded are 520 by 380 by 50 millimeters. Weight is 9.4 pounds or 4.26 kilograms, excluding accessories. Here we have the cautions. It says do not immerse in water, avoid extreme temperatures. Do not destroy in any way. Do not disassemble. Here's some tips. It says make sure the connecting cables match the solar panel and charging equipment. In theory, the solar panel can charge all kinds of batteries. It depends on the charging circuit of the batteries. Please make sure the charging voltage of the solar panel matches the input voltage of your batteries. Note that the red part of the Anderson plug is positive and the black part is negative. Please connect positive to positive, negative to negative to ensure using correctly. This here says the output of the solar panel is related to the intensity and angle of the sunlight. Solar panel from a 90 degree angle with the sun has the best charging efficiency. To ensure your user experience, please use solar panel in a place with sufficient sunlight. So if it's overcast out, there's not really a solar panel that's going to give you a great charge unless you have a massive array. So you do want to set this up for the best success. So here they show the sun here, the rays are at 90 degrees to the solar panel. So here it's showing partly cloudy. It still works, but not great. And then it's overcast and it's bad. So here are different warnings here. You can read through those. Here's some frequently asked questions. It says, is the solar panel waterproof? It says both sides are protected well from splashing water. It says the connectors which are on the bag are not waterproof do not immerse in water and we don't recommend using the solar panel in the rain and moist environments so if you have this out and it does get rained on it's not necessarily going to destroy it but they don't recommend that so it's best to try to avoid that situation here it says is it chainable with other solar panels it says yes you can chain it with solar panels that have the nominal output voltage in parallel you should note that the superimposed current cannot exceed the current that the connecting cables and plugs can bear and the warranty does not cover any property loss caused by a misoperation when chaining solar panels this talks about the usb controller box this talks about charging in cloudy or shady conditions this talks about charging a power station. Okay, so here's the cable here. As you can see, take a look at this here. Well, we have the little chart here talking about setting it up properly. Here's the controller. We have USB type C and USB A. So if you have a small power bank you use to charge your phone, you can plug that in here to one of these ports to charge it. So we can plug this in here like so and then we have all these adapters that fit into different devices. So these cords can all be stored in this pouch also. So this is a leg here that can be folded up. So I'll pull it open, it has Velcro on it and it has a strap. So this can go against the ground. So this part and this part up in the air will go against the ground. So let's open this up the best we can here on my bench. So it says press here. Okay, so it has these adjustable straps and we'll see how much of this we can unfold. Probably not much. So here we have another one of those kickstands. So there's one here and here. So it looks like we have two kickstands on here and there's four panels. So if I open this up, there'll be another panel. So here's the panel. This has an ETFE coating on it. So that's a type of Teflon type material to help keep these clean. And this also has grommets on here so you could hang it. So I'll take this outside and I'll connect it up to my power station and we'll test it out. Okay, so this is currently at 100% charge. So I need to drain it down before I can solar charge it. So what I have here is my charger for my lawnmower battery. This is a seven and a half amp hour, 56 volt battery. So I'm going to plug that in to the inverter here. I'll turn on the inverter, I'll place the battery in, and now we can charge this. And this takes 210 watts, I think. Yes, that would be the max rating on that. So I'll charge up this battery. We'll see how much percentage is left here. And then we'll do some solar charging on it and see how much it brings the battery up. And it's kind of hard to see here. It's drawing about 233 watts on this battery. 
Okay, my mower battery is finished charging and my power station is currently at 32%. So I'll unplug this and now I'll take this outside and I'll plug solar into it and we'll let it charge up. Okay, so I have the solar panel set up here in my driveway. They're pointing pretty much due east. I have the power station here, it's plugged into it. So a little tip, you can take a small cylinder. I have a spray paint can here and I'll put it on the panel and I want to make it so there's less shadow. So what I did is I angled these up just a little bit and you can see there's very little shadow around this. So that means it's at the optimum angle. So right now I was just shading it a little bit. So let's let this go up and we're charging it just around 80 watts. So I'll probably check on this throughout the day and rotate the panels so they're facing towards the sun as the sun moves. Okay, so the sun has shifted. So I've been rotating this over the past few hours, but it's in the shade now and it's currently charging at about 16 watts. So it is charging a little bit, but we can get much better charging if I just move it over here. Okay, so I have this set up here and now I'm getting around 90 watts of input. It's hard to see in the camera, but there are a few clouds in the sky, so it's not a perfectly sunny day. But it is still very bright outside. Okay, so I had to move the solar panels because the area where I had them was shaded. So it finished up here. I started a little after 9 o'clock a.m. and it's around 3 p.m. And the power bank is now at 100%. So now I can fold these up and put them away and I'll sum this up in my shop. So that's the Togo Power 120 watt portable solar panel. So that concludes my charging test. So I don't know if it came through in the video, but it was a slight bit overcast out, but it was pretty bright. And there were a couple times when it got into the shade, so I had to adjust it. So like any solar panel, it's only as good as the sun that's reaching it. So the Togo Power power station that I was charging up is 634 watt hours. So we filled up about two thirds of it in about six hours of charge time. Now I could have put this out earlier in the day. And also if I had a more sunny area that would have charged it a little bit quicker. Also, there's still a fair amount of charge time left in the day. So if this thing was completely depleted, I think through a day of charging, this would charge the whole thing up. So that battery I had for the lawnmower is a very big battery. I think it's around 450 watt hours or something like that. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but I think that's a good sample of something large that you can power with the battery and then replenish with the solar. I think this would also work well for portable fridges and devices like that. If you're using a CPAP on the go with your power station, you can charge it up. So if I was traveling with my power station, I'd probably charge it in the car and when I get to my destination, I'd continue charging it with solar when I'm not running my car. Now this seemed very sturdy to me. It was pretty windy today and this didn't budge in the wind. Now I don't know if the wind was coming from behind if it would have flipped it over, but this seemed to have enough heft to it. And I could have staked it down or something or weighted it down if the wind really got bad, but I didn't feel there was any risk of it blowing over. I like that it has these grommets here though. So that gives you some flexibility, like if you want to hang it from something, or if you want to temporarily put it on a roof of a vehicle, you could use some bungee straps to hold it up there so the wind doesn't blow it off. Now I was charging up a portable power station, but you can also use this to to charge portable power banks. You can also directly charge phones and laptops and things like that. You do want to be careful with those devices that you have them in the shade. Now this thing creates its own shade. So if you're charging your phone, you can plug it in behind here and set it behind the panel itself to keep the device itself out of the sun. So I think this is going to come in really handy on our camping trips, but I can also use this during a power outage. If I'm using my power bank to a power a refrigerator or something, and I have a couple different power banks, I can have some charging while I'm using others and then swap them out and take them outside and charge them. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.